You guys enjoy that? So I want to make I want to make a uh, I want to make a couple uh, uh, correction and you know what she was talking about um, is so valuable. But I want to make a correction. Last week, Carlene and Randy come up and, and they um, they talked about the class and. When I, during my message, I said that would be detrimental to take that class. I meant to say it would be instrumental to take that class. So, um, you know, those big words, I'm trying to use some bigger words in my, in my little vocabulary. And I said detrimental to take that class, and I meant to be instrumental. And uh, thank you, Rick, for pointing that out to me. <laughs> and I'm so grateful this morning that um, it can be instrumental to us, that we can learn something from it and not be damaged by it. So grateful for that. And then uh, Kim talked about taking um, tests over and over and over. And, and when I started my Caneo class in, in school, I thought that, because um, it said you could redo the test. So I would take the test, and I would get like an 80-something, and it said you could take it again. So I kept taking the test over and over until I got 100%. And then when I went to Georgia and, and, and asked the um, girl in charge of that, she goes, well, you can take as many times as you want to, but the first grade you get, the first grade you get the grade you got and I'm like man so here I am taking them tests over and over to get 100% and it wasn't counting but <clears throat> I am grateful this morning for family I am so grateful for family this morning because it's so valuable family does matter this morning family does matter intimacy with family does matter this morning God created family he could have did it another way but he created us to be family He created Adam and Eve, the image, his own image, in the image of a family, connecting one another together. And he formed family through them, and then through that, here we are, another family. And it goes on and on, and we still continue to make family after family after family. And we grow people up to learn the things of God. Why do you think God created family the way he did? He could have created us in the same way that he created the trees. Dropping seeds on the ground and popping up another tree. Can you imagine all of us walking around the world and just dropping something off of us and it grows another one of us? Can you imagine producing people that way? God didn't intend for it to be that way. He intended for us to have an intimate family relationship. Why? Because family together, we can grow and learn things that God wants us to teach in the way that God needs us to learn. He chose to create moms and dads. And for those moms and dads to learn to love Jesus and learn to love God and the things of God to the point they can teach their children how to love God that way. He did it in a way that we don't have to learn from the world, the ways of the world, but we can learn from the ways of God. So when moms and dads, when you are sold out to Jesus, you can teach your kids how to be sold out to Jesus. Doesn't mean they're going to choose Jesus, but you can teach them how to choose Jesus, that he is first and foremost. Not all of them are going to choose him. Because, see, listen, there comes a time when you have to release your children out to the world. You have to let them go and they have to make their own choices. You still try to cover them as much as you can, but you have to let them make their own choices. I remember a time that I was at a restaurant with my, my children and my grandchildren. They were all here, and they were all making all these, these this, this noise and stuff. You know, when I go into a situation, especially in a restaurant, I want people to, I, I want things to be like calm. I don't like all the activity because I because I think about other people wanting to have a nice dinner with their family and when you got all these kids that are raising all this ruckus so one of my grandkids was smashing his food with the, the toy and I said can you put that toy away while you're eating and and his mom said and bless her heart she said well you don't have to listen to poppy while I'm here so I bit my tongue, and I turned the other way, and I, and I watched the little TV they had in the corner, and I was like, Jesus, how do I, how do I, how do I figure this out? How, what do I say here? You know, because in my day, that would have been an automatic backhand, um, you know, and, and it would have been. I mean, it would have been, 
And, uh, but, but, but it happened, and I didn't know how to handle it. So I went to one of my friends, and I told him, I said, man, this happened, it's really bothering me, what do I do? And he goes, well, you wanted to control the situation. You wanted to have control of the situation when those children are already grown up, and these are their children. You should let them have that control, and only give them advice when they ask you for the advice. Because they're grown, and they're their own adults. So here I am crying in this conversation because I realized I wanted to step into this situation. All right, you guys are around me. I want you to be in the environment I want you to be in while you're in my presence. It don't work that way. It didn't work that way. But I still love them. I still press into them. I didn't walk away from them. Because we can't walk away because we're family. If you don't walk away. God created man in his own image. In Genesis 1.27, he said that he created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it. And rule over the fish in the sea and over the birds in the sky. And every living thing that moves on the earth. That's Genesis 1.27 through 28. He gave us an instruction here of what to do. He said, subdue. Subdue the earth. Greek and Hebrew, subdue means to take charge of it, to take control of it. Not let it control us. We're here to take charge of of, of our environment, to take charge of this planet. Not for the planet to take charge of us and to rule over us. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants to, us to take, let it take charge over us. Let it take charge over our kids. And when we start to come into the mindset of we want to have family, we want to walk in this family environment so we can teach our kids, learn from one another, respect and honor authority over top of us, That's what it means. None of us have perfect families. Does anybody have a perfect family? No. None of us, none of us, I know that one's not. None of us have perfect families. None of us have perfect families. And that's that's all right. We're learning, as she said, we're learning to become, through the blood of Jesus, perfected. Adam and Eve brought sin into the world. Therefore, their children sinned. And we're talking the first couple chapters of the Bible. Murder in the first couple chapters in the Bible. That's how far it got. Four chapters into it, we're already in the the murder in the Bible. Because of sin brought into the world. And I know that Adam and Eve, I know that Adam and Eve explained to their children what happened what they did that was wrong because they still love God they still wanted a relationship with God but they made they they made a choice that he asked them not to and in that choice there was consequences and so we have consequences to our choices but yet we're free to choose whatever we want to choose so Adam and Eve taught their children right but their children when they grew up still had their own choice to make Even if we don't teach our children in the ways of the Lord, they still have their own choices to make. I grew up with four dads by the time I was 16. I grew up with with parents that grew marijuana and sold marijuana. I grew up with that. I could have chose to stay in that environment. But because my parents lived that way, doesn't mean I have to live that way. My parents didn't raise me in the admiration of the Lord. But God said, will you follow me? Just like he did all the disciples. And I said, yes. He said, the enemy is always willing to take you back. Will you follow me? And I said, yes, I will give you 100%. And I have ever since I've said that word. I will give you 100%. I've given him 100%. Have I made mistakes? More than not. 
Have I learned from them? Yes. And I, can, I still am learning from my mistakes, from my words that I say, from words that hurt, from words I didn't understand, where they come from, from a hurt from me, or sometimes other people have a hurt that they say things or, or, or they receive things wrong because of hurts in their own lives. Cain, because he was jealous of his brother who was already instructed to give of the first fruits of a flock, of a meat offering to, to the Lord. His parents already instructed him on how to do that. But because, because Cain tilled the ground and he made these great fruit and this stuff from the ground, he thought, well, I will give this to God. And that's okay to give God other things of yourself. But God said, I want this first and foremost. And the thing that he was taught to give first and foremost, he did not want to give. Even though he had instruction from his parents and instruction from God. Because God come to him and ask him, why is your countenance off? Why are you not smiling right now? Genesis 4, 3 through 7. If you have your Bibles, turn there. Cain became jealous of his brother. Instead of submitting to what was right, he chose to sin. I'm glad we don't choose that. I'm glad we choose what's right. If you choose to sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus. He's your advocate. He will cleanse you, make you whole, keep you, hold you. Verse 3. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of fruit from the ground. And Abel, on his part, also brought the first things of his flock. And of the fat portions. And the Lord had regard. He accepted Abel's offering. Then the Lord said, But for Cain, his offering, he had no regard. He did not accept Cain's offering. It wasn't that Cain didn't have something good to offer. It's that he didn't have what God asked him to offer. When God tells you to do something, you're supposed to do it. And that's what it was. God said, I want you to do it this way. And when they do it their way, that's, they have their own choice. You can do it your way, but your way is not going to be productive. And it's going to bring no good to your life. If it's not of God, you're out of the perfect will of God because the perfect will of God is doing what he asks you to do. I've missed it so many times. But Cain's offering wasn't regarded. So Cain became very angry, and this is where his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? Why is your face changed? Why have you lost your joy, your smile? If you do well, listen, if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? Will you not smile again? Will you not have joy again in your life if you do well? And if you do not do well, listen, sin is crouching at your door. And its desire, sin's desire is for you to grab a hold of it. But you must master it. See, he's given us all these instructions, what we are supposed to do. And when you read your Bible, you will learn how to master these things. It won't happen overnight, some things. Some things can happen right away, but not everything will happen overnight. So what did Cain do? He had all this good counsel. He had all this good counsel from his parents, from God. What did he choose to do? He chose to, he chose to sin. Therefore, he went out and killed his brother. just by not wanting to do what's right he stepped into that he made his own choice after good counsel from his parents after good counsel from God he made his own choice 
your children will too. You can only take them so far and then give them back to God and let them do whatever they're going to do with it. Still be joyful, still be happy, still press into them, still be excited for them, but we don't always have to accept where they're at. We don't have to be happy where they're at. We don't have to be joyful where they're at. Whether my kids or my family, I've got to know. When they're your kids and they're your family, I mean, that's when it hurts the most, when it's, when it's happening in your own family. And it hurts me when this family right here, I see things in this family. I see people walking away so easily, so offended, so easy. Instead of being family and, and, and working things out, and sometimes one word can change a whole thing. One conversation can change a whole thing. So Cain and Abel didn't have a perfect family. Moses didn't have a perfect family. He was raised by a family that wasn't even his. You remember when Pharaoh, his daughter, found Moses in the water floating down? And then Moses' mom was hiding over here in the bushes. Make sure he's all right. She's probably falling from bush to bush to bush as he was floating down the streams. Can you imagine? Sneaking around, just like, oh, I hope he's okay, I hope he's okay. Who knows how far they went down the stream before the daughter found him. But she wasn't nursing, so she needed someone to nurse the baby. And here, Moses' mom's like, right here, I can nurse the baby. <laughs> so she, she goes and she nurses the baby and uh, gets, gets to be in, in that house and nurse the baby. And so there's the first welfare case. She got paid to do it and um, nurse her own baby in the, in the, just kidding. No, that is, that is. So Moses had a family that wasn't, that wasn't all, all that. Yet he led God's people to a land of milk and honey. Turned a bad thing into something good. Came out of a situation into something that was good. So that can happen with your children. No matter the situation, you keep pressing into them, you keep praying, you keep watching, you keep learning, you keep seeing what they're doing. You might not always be able to speak into their life. You might not always be able to speak good things in their life because they might not receive it, but you still speak those things out loud. My children are going to serve the Lord. My children do want to serve the Lord, even though you're not seeing it. My children are are going to be prosperous. My children are going to raise my grandchildren right. I love grandchildren because you can get them when the parents are not there, and then you can like pour it all into them, and then they go back. And then, then, but I love my grand. I got ten of them, so there's all kinds of scenarios. You know, they'll go home and they're like, "Well, will you pray for us before we go to bed?" They're not used to that, but yet they're doing it because the kids are asking them to. Well, I want to watch this, or I want to see this, or I want to do this. Well, Jesus is number one. When, when one of my sons says that Trump is number one, he said, no, Jesus is number one. They're learning those kind of things in my house. So I'm grateful that God is able to take us as grandparents and teach our grandchildren the ways of the Lord, even when our children are not. If you think you missed it, you didn't. Start right now pressing into them. If you think you raised your children the wrong way, you might have. It doesn't matter. Start out pressing into them. Pressing into the face of God to change their lives. Because prayer is the ultimate thing that changes things. Prayer is the ultimate thing that changes environments. This group right here, if every one of us were sold out 100% to Jesus ready to do whatever he says to do, whenever he says to do it. All of our wounds, all of our fractures are healed and mended. This group right here can turn this city upside down. This small group can change this whole city. We can literally change the whole city by prayer and fasting and being where we need to be in Jesus. Jesus was born into a family that wasn't so great either. It was almost scandalous the way you look at it. I mean, look at the situation. You got 
you got Jesus being born into a family that the wife is hiding that she's pregnant because she's not married to the husband yet. And so you got this stuff going on. And then you got a husband that's ready to leave his wife because of this. I mean, can you imagine? And then they're kind of keep this hush hush from everybody. And then all of a sudden, they get the, the angel of the Lord comes to, to Mary and says, Well, this is what's going on. And then they go to Joseph and says, This is why it's going on. So then they start bringing this family back together. But I think there was people that knew, and it's, the word got out that she was having a baby out of wedlock. And so that, so, you know, the backbiting, all those little things, I mean, that, that happens, you know. Well, listen to this. Look at this. Oh, wow. They're doing this. They had sex, and they wasn't married. Which well, you shouldn't. But that's not what happened. But they, they perceived it to happen that way. So when they perceived it to happen that way, they went out and they spoke it, what they perceived, which was no tr- not truth at all. Therefore, it caused division. Therefore, people walk away. And when he come back to his own city, people didn't get healed because of their unbelief of who he really was and who Jesus was. So his family wasn't perfect, yet he's the savior of the world. So you're grateful for that. So don't walk away. Don't walk away. Press in. Press in. Learn how to press in. Learn how to be healed from your wounds. Learn how to be healed of all those things. I can go on and on and on about different families in the Bible of how they're just jacked up and messed up. I know some of your families, they're jacked up. They're messed up. But you got to, you love. You love. You press in because Jesus is Jesus and he taught us how to be loved. And we're created in the image of love. Therefore, we need to love one another. It's going to hurt sometimes. What about your family? What does it look like? I know my family by far is not perfect. I could give you a million scenarios of how my family's not perfect, but I love every one of them. I love them from the depth of my heart. Do we disagree? We do disagree. Do we argue at times? We do. But what else we do is we, we come back together and we talk about what happened, why we're hurt, all those different things. So, there might be a little bit of a division, but when you understand, when, when the perception is, is, is refocused on what's truth, then that comes back together. And you, you come back together and you're, you bound, you, you're, you're bound together because sometimes we believe off of feeling and not what, what truth is. When you believe off of what you feel at the time, you can walk away from a scenario and there's no truth in that scenario that would make you walk away. Sometimes when people don't understand people or don't understand what they're saying, they're not understanding of a place of hurt and woundedness in their own lives, which causes them to perceive a situation totally different than what it is because of their lack of healing, the wounds they have in their life, the disappointments that they have. So I'm asking you as a family to not walk away from this place. If you're discouraged with someone, me, my wife, probably not her. She's perfect, as perfect as you can be. But if you're discouraged with me, I ask you to come to me. We'll talk it out. I'll take that time. You know, if you got a problem with me, t- talk to me about the problem. And we'll figure it out. Because I might have said something. You should know my heart by now that my heart is in love. And I don't always say everything perfectly. um, But we have to understand the things that I say, did it come from a wound or did it come from, I said it wrong. But sometimes people don't do that and they walk away and they backbite and they tear me down. And and I'm not saying that you do, I'm just saying this in in general people. And and, and I could put May in a situation some people walk away and backbite and talk. But you walk away, you back tight. You backbite, which hurts. You put down, and you make a decision to leave. 
from your wounds. And really, the wounds come from feelings and not from truth. And so, um, I encourage you, don't walk away before you make it, have a discussion. Have a discussion first before your presumptions and all your, the enemies, what he's putting in your mind, and just your thought pattern. Have those discussions with one another, even, even in your own families, before you make those choices choose first to talk to your family choose first love and go to the situation with love and honor and respect we live in a time listen we're living in a day that quitting is so easy I mean you just like you just quit and walk away I mean you know I'm at this church here I am I'm at this church they've loved on me They've loved on me for, for a long time. They've loved on me. And, but someone said something, and it did, I didn't agree with it. So I just was to walk. Instead of understanding, why did you say that? And then you can talk about those things. I'm talking about family. I'm talking about the church, but I'm talking about our own families at home. Why did you say that? And I, and I could say, this is why I said that. I could say, um to you if, if you ask me a question and I give you a truthful answer to your question but you take the answer as judgment and it's not judgment it's truth you ask me a question and I'm giving you truth to that question and but being hurt from people from church you take that answer and you turn it into judgment therefore you walk away from that instead of going and saying well, why did you judge this situation? Then I can explain to you the difference between judgment and truth. But yet you walk away. We're living in a world right now that honor is not even a thing anymore. You know? If you're going to walk away from your family, at least tell your family you're going to do it. <laughs> you know, at least say, hey, I'm going to walk away. So you have an opportunity to ask them why, <laughs> you know? But the, the, the um, I want to say the, the, be careful because people watch this, but I just want to say it's, it's, there's no honor in that. There's no honor in just walking away without an explanation because, because people have poured into your life and your family. People have poured, your family has poured into one another. Then when one just walks away for whatever, it hurts. It does hurt. Because it's from presumptions and not truth. I don't have a clock anymore, so I only know what time it is. Okay. Let me close. So God chose family that it could be a tight-knit thing that we could teach one another and stay in the family and grow that way. Learning the attributes of God and not the attributes of the world. That's why he kept his family together so we could, we could learn from one another and not from what the world wants to put on us. That's, that's what God wants us to do. Children, I got a word for you this morning. In Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Children, this is for you. I kept you in here this morning for this very reason. And because the back's a mess. Um, and I was too tired. I was too tired to work on I think I got an average of four hours of sleep per day this last week. And um, so if that. And um, so I didn't get to finish that back there like I wanted to. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Listen, children, because this is going to be instrumental. Not detrimental, but instrumental for you. <laughs> I'll never forget I said that, and I'll always correct myself. Children, this is instrumental. It's vitally instrumental for you to learn this and stand on this. Children, you are to obey your parents. Your parents are to obey God. You are to obey your parents in the Lord, for it is right. Remember, God is always right. God is always right, and he knows best in every situation. Children, obey your parents for this right. Honor your father and your mother, 
in a world that has no honor. Honor your father and your mother. There is honor in the world. It's just not like I would like to see it. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. This is the promise. So that, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. See, he gave children, he gave you something to do. Obey your parents. When they say clean the room, clean it. When they say put the video game down, put it down forever. When he says, um, that would be good. It would really would be good. Go out in the woods and hike and like what I used to do. Man, I was like Rambo. I mean, that's what my life was growing up. I was like Rambo, man. I was running, jumping from tree to tree, Tarzan swinging from tree on the vines. That's what I did. I didn't have the video games. I mean, the first video game I think I had was like a little tank that shot a little dot out that bounced off of everything and then finally hit the target. That's about what I had for games growing up. Man, you guys are like in these games that you put glasses on. It's like your own world, and you stay in there for days, and that world just intrigues you. So when parents say, put the video game down, just lay it down, sell it. Sell it and buy some new clothes or something. Honor your mother and father, which is the um, command with, with a promise. So that it, listen kids, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. So if you obey your parents, you're going to live long. Not saying you're not going to be living long if you don't, but I'm just saying this is a promise that you will if you obey your parents. So who wants to live longer? Yeah, I do. I do. My mom and dad are gone, but I obey Jesus. I obey my Father in heaven. God chose family, so we must choose it as well. No matter the cost, choose family. Work things out. Figure it out. Figure out what the situation is. Get help. If family was important to God, it must be important to you. It should be important to you. Let's stand. Father, we thank you this morning for family. We thank you, God, that you have inst instructed family, Lord, to, to live a certain way, God. That it doesn't take form of the world, but it takes form of the image that it was created in, which is love. God, we thank you that you formed us in the image of love. And that love is so inviting. Love is so rewarding. Love is so correcting. Love is gentle. Love is kind. Love is patient. And you created us in that to become that. I thank you this morning for you, this church, your people. The ones we haven't touched yet, Lord. The ones that we have, we have touched, that they've, 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 they've had a sour taste in their mouth from maybe something that happened. God, we ask that you would minister to them now. You would bless them now. You would encourage them now. Strengthen them. Draw them deeper into the fold. Not to just accept Jesus and just end it with that we thank you Lord for this house for the, for the ones here right now for family God we ask right now that Lord you would just show them in their hearts where they have had where they've had preconsumptions about things where they've misread situations where they've dishonored where they've backbitten where they've misjudged show them God that no shame would come with it, but repentance would come with it, followed by joy in every attribute of heaven. We glorify you this morning. In Jesus' name. Listen, if you need to pray this morning, the ambient music is going up. Come and ask God. Go to the person you have a problem with. Don't make a line too big for me. But go to the person you have a problem with. Tell them. Discuss it. Fix it. I had to yesterday. Which is someone yesterday that I had some situation with. These two misunderstandings come together. We laughed about it. It's over. 
forgotten as far as east is from the west, same thing as our sin. It's over. Family is so valuable. The connection is, is rejoining. And we made a promise to one another that that would never happen again. That we would, that, that we would always come face to face to one another and solve any situation, any downfall, any hurt, anything, any misconception that we would face to face make it right. So I'm asking you this morning if you, if you haven't done it that way, if you have ought against your brother, that you would come to your brother first and then lay it all down on the altar and give it to God. Because for the most part healing is what God wants us to have so we can live a full, productive life. Reaching the most people that we can reach because we are solid in who we are and whose we are.